Hi everyone and welcome to this week's rendition of CMC Markets. I am your host Ms. Schneider, Tr Chief Strategist of MarketGage.com and we're going to start with a look at the NASDAQ. It's been an interesting week as you can see we spent <clears throat> all this time underneath the 50-day moving average and then we got back above it as we began this week and here on Tuesday a little bit more follow-through. So we actually now have had higher closes for the last one, two, three, four days. So people are starting to get excited again about a bull market and we haven't even had our NVIDIA earnings today and in fact NVIDIA actually dropped about 1.7% today uh, with news of Apple and competition, which is basically going to be a theme in AI, I believe, which is going to be competition and trying to figure out what fair value is. But nonetheless, looking at the NASDAQ right now, it makes it pretty easy. Even though we had a nice sort of V bottom here with this move back over the 50-day moving average, we really need to do a bit more. And if you look at some of the other sectors, particularly if you look at the transportation sector, Sector, or you look at the retail sector, both extremely important to the U.S. economy, the semiconductors are kind of like maybe have run their course in terms of leading. And I mention that because we're starting to see more and more stress on the possibility of a stagflation environment as opposed to some great economic recovery, regardless of the fact that May starts out slow, ends great, and what we're going to be looking at in an election year. So just looking at the numbers here on the NASDAQ. Essentially what you can see is 17,940. That is your 50-day moving average. So that's going to be clearly the most important number to hold on to. And with this sort of doji day close that we're getting right here, we've had the opening and the closing pretty much close together at around 18,000 100, let's call it, even though it's slightly trading below. So that's going to be our pivotal area for tomorrow. Above 18,100, then sure, it looks like we can continue to move higher. Probably next level would be about 18,200. Below 18,100, obviously, as I mentioned, I would be looking at that 17,940 where that 50 day moving average is. And if that breaks down, then I think we might break down a little bit hard as we've gotten a whole bunch of new money coming into the market thinking that the correction was over, in which case I would say your next major support would be somewhere around 17,640. So what you see here is the um, futures contract, cash contract of crude oil, WTI, and that's had a pretty spectacular move lower. There's lots of different news around. I'd say the two most influentials are a the fact that now there's more talk of production increase uh, from Russia, number one, uh, which of course would put some pressure on prices. But number two, with the conflict in the Middle East, we also still have the possibility that anything can escalate. So it's been a choppy market to trade. But what we can see here, interestingly enough, is sort of this head and shoulders top. Here would be your left shoulder, your head, your right shoulder. The neckline really broke out down down a few days ago. And of course, 8081 was the nature of where it broke out from. So now we're seeing the breakdown. And if you just look at the measurement of this move, it's really about a $6 move, which means going from 81 down to about $6, I would not necessarily discount the possibility of this going back to $75 a barrel. And perhaps if this gets down to $75 a barrel, you'll start to see uh, some interest from the long side. But in the meanwhile, what we have right now, obviously 78 looks somewhat pivotal. If we just look at the action, you can see we're below the 200 and we're below the 50. This puts this in a distribution phase, which just basically means that cash is getting out of this. So th there's an outflow of cash, hence distribution in this particular market. But we are getting into some near-term support. So if we just look at some of the numbers more more uh, near than what we are right now, I'd say 7750 
is a good point. But let's look at our more pivotal area. And I would say if you look at the top of this bar here, which was the day of open and the day of open here, really you're talking about 79. So if we can get back through $79, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to see a complete measured move of a head and shoulders top through 79. I would imagine that we'll at least go back and test that 200 day moving average of 80.34. And of course, under 79, we'll look at that 77.50 that we just talked about. And if it breaks down under there, we might see a little bit support higher at around 76.15. But really, I'd be looking for more of a move extended down to around 75. Now, moving on over to gold. This is the cash contract of gold. And all we are in right now is a period of consolidation. Here's a nice upward sloping on your 50, nice upward sloping on your 200. And you can see that we've had tremendous amount of support around that 2280. 2300 held up even better, but on an intraday basis, we've kind of tested that point. 2330 is what I'm going to consider to be pivotal. And we haven't gotten up there yet. That would be more up around these levels, up just over these uh, bars on these candles around the wicks. So if we put our mouse right here at 2330, above that, I think next area we have to be looking at is 2360. If it gets through 2360, it would really be a very bullish case. And I think that it would just be a matter of time that gold goes back up to its more recent highs over 2400 and then on to new highs. Of course, on the flip side, as long as we stay under 2330, we would be looking at 2300 I think more importantly than any other area and then under 2300 next time 2280 may not hold up as more importantly would be where it goes down to the 50 which is around 2245 so keep those numbers in mind and silver is looking actually a little bit better because it's already kind of tested it's 50 day moving average, that 26 level held really well. We've had a nice pop since then. Yes, we do have resistance in these levels here at around 27.75, but we get through there. Clearly, I think we get through 28. We're starting to look at a much more bullish narrative in silver with the possibility, of course, of seeing not only 30, which it tried to get up to, but maybe even getting up to 32, 35, and then 40. So looking at tomorrow, just in terms of actual pivotal points, I would say the pivotal point of it around 27.15 is your support. We're above 27.15 bias is bullish, below a little bit more neutral to negative. Above that 2715, clearly we need to high, clear these most recent highs here at around 2750. We get through 2750, I think we'll be able to get up closer to 28 pretty easily. Below 2715, then we might be able to go down back to test around this 2668 level. And of course, if that breaks, we're looking at 26. But stepping back over the overall chart, to me, this is looked like a healthy correction and even more so now a nice little pop with some consolidation taking its time to move higher moving over to the yen dollar yen pretty exciting market when we talked last we said that there might be intervention at around 160 it still is relatively clear whether or not relatively unclear whether or not the Bank of Japan actually intervene or did exactly what we talked about last week, wait for the Fed meeting to see if they got a more dovish or more hawkish stance and what would happen to the dollar. And quite honestly, the dollar is just really in a range between 104.50 and 106.50. And until that range breaks, very hard to assess. So now we've had a creep back up after a really nice move lower. And the question is what happens from there? You can see we're into a lot of resistance right up at around the highs of today, 104.66. Let's give it a little bit more room, say up to around 104. 90. We get through 104.90, that's probably another sign of strength for the dollar, in which case we'll be looking at the yen at 156 and 157. If we cannot get through that 104.90 and we actually start to move lower from here, I would say a move down below 153.90 would put us right back down to around this low here at 152.80. And of course, if we break down under this 151.93, that means the dollar is probably breaking below that 104.50, in which case your next big move would be where we did so much work before we broke out of, and that would be 150. 
Something we haven't looked at in a while would be platinum. This is also the cash chart. And honestly, that looks pretty darn explosive. If you go back after this spectacular move lower that we saw in 2023, we've been really basing out. And if we, even though we had that one little false breakout here, if you take a look now and you see through 990, especially on a closing basis, it does look like this can get to 1,020 pretty easily. And where would we change our mind? It would really have to be a breakdown under 960. If we're taking a look now at natural gas, it did exactly what we were anticipating that it could do. After it got through the 50, we're getting some follow through. And we've really basically cleared this base, which goes to it around 199.2. Now this is the cash chart. So if we continue to hold the 199 to 2, you can see we've had a little bit of resistance up here at 210. Let's call it 210 to round it off. We get through and look today was an inside day to the day before after we had this nice three day rally. So some consolidation and congestion working off a little bit of overbought near term overbought conditions through that 210. I don't see any reason why this cannot continue its rally up to around 226 at its next level. We break down back under that 199 level, then perhaps we're going to take another look here at a move closer to 188. But it seems to me right now with the slope on the 50 day moving average starting to move up, the momentum is more to test some of the regions above than it is right now to go back below, especially considering we spent really basically end of January, most of February, all of March, all of April, and now as we're into May, breaking out of this basing action. And finally, let's take a look at sugar. Because sugar has been one of the soft commodities that has not made a move. As we all, of course, know about what happened with cocoa. Coffee recently also testing up at the highs, coming off a little bit. But now sugar, which looked like basically it was over, has made an interesting move over the last couple of days and particularly into today. As you can see, if we go back to the low here, when we were in December, we went down and tested this level right here, which was at 20, let's call it 20. And now we're back over 20 and into all of this right here, building a little bit of a base. Now here is your 50 day moving average, which comes in at 2136. But if the cash market continues up from here, I'd say if we can get through 2032 in the cash market of sugar, then certainly it looks to me like not only would we be heading closer to 2125 to 2130, but it also would mean that maybe with notices of shortages coming out today, um, particularly due to weather, um, it is possible that sugar will come back. So if we put it all together with gold looking good, silver looking good, platinum looking good, oil at this point in X factor, natural gas possibly bottoming out, some of the softs as we know that have, and more recently some of the grains looking better, particularly wheat and now soybeans, if sugar takes off, then I would say it would be really hard to convince me of any other narrative other than what we just showed you with NASDAQ and the weakness in retail and in transportation, a stagflation environment. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. See you all again next week and bye for now.